what on earth? Okay, so here we go. This one is going to be one to remember. If you're new here, this is my Lamborghini Gallardo. And over the past year, I've took the naturally aspirated 5.2 litre V10 in the Gallardo and added two turbos to it. Now at the minute, the Gallardo is running 820 horsepower, but that is beside the point because we're going to be driving this over a thousand miles to Barcelona. So Hannah, are you ready for this? No. <laughs> Let's get the Gallardo ready. So first step before the trip was to put on the rear bumper of the Lamborghini. It does still fit regardless of the turbos. I just didn't want to take any chances with the Spanish Authority. Then step two was to put on the roof box. I wanted to bring my bike on this trip, but we'll get onto that later. Then it was time to start the trip. Now before this all went wrong, the plan was to travel from Leicester down to Portsmouth. We'll then put ourselves and the Lamborghini on a ferry from Portsmouth, which will go all the way down to the north of Spain to a place called Bilbao. We'll then get off the ferry at Bilbao and drive the Lamborghini from Bilbao all the way to Barcelona. Okay, first little section of the trip done. We are on the ferry, we've got a nice little parking spot. I'm kind of liking the Lambo with the rear bumper. It looks a little bit plain, but it's looking smart, especially with the roof box. We've never really tested this out yet, so we're gonna see what it's like when we finally get to Spain. We've got at least 24 hours on this ferry now, so we'll check back with you guys when we hit Spain. Okay, here we go, touchdown in Bilbao. Let's get the Lambo off and onto Spanish soil. First time, no problem, let's go. Now everything was going great until about, well, five minutes down the road. I gave it a little boot through a tunnel and the car went straight into limp mode. Now it's not the first time this has happened and I assume it does it just to protect the engine when it's cold. But this time, it was a little different to usual. The Lambo kept sputtering and coming in and out of limp mode. It was almost like it was trying to cut out the whole car. What the hell is going on with this car already? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it went into limp mode and then because we didn't stop, Oh, we're dead again. Conked out again. What the hell is happening? We're fully dead, I can't even put it in neutral. I'm just gonna leave it for a bit. Literally, as soon as we got here. The only thing I could think, it went into limp mode. Sometimes it does go into limp mode. If you boost it from, if you go from cold, and then start trying to like just boot it a bit. We did get go through a tunnel, so I just wanted to give it a boot, and that's what put it into limp mode. But then we didn't find a place, normally when it goes to limp mode, you've got to turn it off and on, but we carried on driving, and I think, obviously it's not agreed with us doing that. We've literally just got off the ferry. It don't like sitting on idle. Do you know when we was driving then, it was like seeing fun, but as soon as we stopped, it was like straight yeah. away into limp mode. It's never done that before. Come on. Starts up fine. I wanted to eliminate the fact that it could be fuel, so whilst I was at the fuel station, I filled it straight up with some 98 Ron fuel. So you're probably wondering, how did I get here? How did you get here? Well, thanks to Surfshark VPN, I can be anywhere. Digitally. You see, Surfshark is a VPN tool, which means virtual private network. And that means it encrypts all the data sent via the internet so no one can steal your passwords, view your videos, view your private messages, or see what you're doing online. Now, if you think public Wi Fi is safe, then you're wrong. Public Wi Fi is a gold mine for hackers, but not 
when using Surfshark. Now, it still doesn't explain how I got to this point right here. Well, check this out. So let's say you're watching Netflix in the UK and you want to watch a great film like Inception, but when you search it, it's not available. No problem, let's go over to the top right hand corner to Surfshark, change your browsing location to Miami in the United States, then we can go back onto Netflix, refresh it, then search for Inception again, and what do you know, it's available to watch. So to get Surfshark today, click the link in the description box below, use code Matt Armstrong, and that's going to get yourself 83% off, plus an extra three months for free. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so there is literally no risk. Right, let's go check on the Lamborghini. Come on. You've got this. Please, Lambo. You can do this, come on. And after filling it up, it seemed to drive completely fine again. No problems at all, which brought the morals up. <laughs> People probably think, oh, you're doing it for YouTube, this and all, it's cause drama. Literally, we just got off the ferry, I booted it for a tunnel, went into limp mode, it has done that before, that's like, I'm not making it up, but it's gone into limp mode before when I booted it for a ferry. I think it's just to protect the engine from when it's cold. And, um, yeah, and then that happened and it kept clunking out. Why? I am, I am bobbing myself now. Hopefully the Lambo's okay. Oh, let's carry on driving in Spain. Let's get to the next destination. Come on, Lambo. And my confidence was soon knocked when this happened. What on earth? Car's completely clumped. Out, gone. No power steering, nothing. What the hell? Scary, the motorway's right there. Oh my God. Why has it just decided to do this now? The thing is, as soon as you turned it off and then back on, the car ran completely fine again. I had to take a moment to just run through the thoughts of what exactly could be going wrong. Got to get off the motorway anyway, haven't we? I think take the next exit. We've got to get off the motorway, take the next exit. We managed to get off the motorway and my first thought was to take the roof box off so I could open the engine hatch and just see if there was anything that looked like it wasn't right, like a loose connection somewhere. But after checking, I couldn't see anything. The oil seemed a little low, so I topped it up, but other than that, nothing. So, bad news, well, well, I don't know if it's good news or bad news, but I can't see anything mechanically wrong, but like mechanically, I can fix electrically. I have no idea what I'm doing and it seems like an electrical thing. This obviously has its own ECUs now. It's not stock ECU, so everything's controlled by a separate ECU to recognize the turbos and everything. And they are like literally at the back of the engine there. Could they have got wet? But the thing is, it's driving's fine. Like I can't imagine them getting wet. But... I think we need to look into that tracking thing. Yeah, so Ricky mentioned on the phone that there could be a thing which has a tracker on it, which as soon as you go abroad, it um, doesn't like, it tries to demobilize the car, which is possible, which could be possible. Um, but I don't know, I don't know how, it seems weird. But, right, let's get the box on and then, third time lucky, please let this Lambo run. What is wrong with you? Fix yourself, please. We got the box back on the car and I got on the phone to Vodafone who installed the tracker on the car just to see if the tracker could somehow immobilize the car when it was driven abroad. But turns out not. And we're down again. The thing is, it, it idles fine. There's no faults. It just seems as soon as we start driving or after a while, it just completely cuts out. All the oil pressure, the oil temperature's fine. The battery voltage's fine. Corner temperature's fine. Oil level's fine. Literally would not know there's a fault in the car. And after a while, it was time to call it quits. We were sat at the side of the motorway again, which attracted some attention from the locals, obviously being in a Lambo as well. And some of the locals thankfully gave us a helping hand. Their English was about as good as my Spanish, so the communication wasn't great, but the idea was to trailer it off the motorway and into the local workshop. 
where of course the Lamborghini managed to start up perfectly and reverse off the truck with no problems. Okay, so this is fully becoming a complete mystery. Right now we're in some kind of like workshop just about, well, about a mile outside of Bilbao in Spain. The Gallardo's got recovered here. Um, it does run, it does start, and it did drive off the trailer. Um, we just cannot work out what the issue could be. So in here, this is a, a tracker for the car. Um, this is a Vodafone tracker, and it is possible, this is not activated though, the thing is, it is possible that um, if the car gets taken abroad, it, it notifies the owner, which is obviously me and I've not had a notification, then you can cut the car off so um, it won't start. So when it's stopped, it then won't restart, but it doesn't make sense to for what it's doing. And we called Vodafone and yeah, there's no issues that sort of end. Now it seems like it's fuel related, almost, like it's, it, it feels like it's just not fueling at all, or like a, it definitely feels fuel related. But the weird thing is the car ran completely fine all the way up to getting on the ferry, no problems. And then it seems so strange that as soon as you drive it off the ferry, literally a mile down the road, we've got issues with it. I've took the box off and I've opened um, the, the engine and I've checked, checked all electrical connections because it does seem like it could possibly be electrical and something's just unplugged itself. But again, I can't see anything that, is unplugged or out of the ordinary. Because it does have standalone ECUs, the Cyvex stuff, it requires like a special plug-in tool and then a laptop. I've got a Mac and I don't have the plug-in tool, but what we could actually do is plug that in um, into the laptop and then Ricky at RE Performance could remotely look at it and see if he could diagnose the issue. Problem is I don't have a laptop and I don't have that special plug-in thing. So, it, I don't know, <laughs> we're stuck. So what was meant to be a really good road trip video combined with some BMX riding as well ended up becoming an experience I didn't expect. But I guess it's all part of the journey and it didn't end there. <laughs> okay, we've swapped out one Italian stallion for another Italian stallion. We are in a Fiat Panda the Lamborghini is uh, is no longer. We've abandoned ship. We're not going to let that ruin our holiday. Uh, we're carrying on the rest of the journey in the Fiat Panda rental car. Okay, so here is the situation. <laughs> this is the new mode of transport, the Italian Stallion Fiat Panda. So the Lambo will be staying at that little workshop which it got recovered to. That's where it's gonna stay for this whole entire week. We've decided not to call off the whole trip because of it. We've already bought the hotel, we've already bought all the Airbnbs and everything like that. So we've got the Fiat Panda in to replace it. So regarding the Lambo, it's an absolute mystery on what actually could be wrong with it. We've still not figured it out and we're still just going through and through on our brain and what it actually could be. This is the most money I've ever spent on a car, modifying it and buying it, and it's the one car that's gone wrong at the complete wrong time. I'm so interested to find out what is actually wrong with it, but we're not gonna let it spoil the trip for now. So if you guys have any idea on what actually could be wrong with the Lambo, anything will help, put it in the comment section below. I'm, I'm laughing right now, but I, this is just, I, it's just a disaster. Sometimes I, I hate cars, sometimes I do, but yeah, it, it's, it's the whole journey. And Hannah, do you know what is the funniest thing about this? Well, it's not funny, but it is gonna be funny for people to watch. What? If we have to recover the Lamborghini back from Spain to the UK, it's gonna cost us an absolute fortune. So we decided that we need to get the Lamborghini back on the ferry home and then recover it from when we get back to the port at Portsmouth. Now, to do this, the Lambo's obviously got to have to drive onto the ferry. Now, it's at that workshop at the minute, which means you could be towing the Lamborghini with the Fiat Panda. <laughs> but guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button. That's the least you could do just to sort of bring the moral up whilst we're here. And uh, well, stay tuned because you're about to find out what are we gonna do when getting back and you're gonna find out how we're gonna get back 
on the unfortunate events. But thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.